On each face <laughs> And I know they feel The presence of the Lord <clears throat> I just woke up Sweet Holy Spirit yes. Sweet Heavenly Dove Stay right here with us and filling us with your love and for these blessings we will lift our hands in praise and without a doubt we'll know that we have been revived When we shall leave, when we shall leave, when we shall leave this place. Ah, that's a great song there. This is Doris Akers. Wrote this song here. 1962. Yeah. Out of the Yes Lord book, by the way. It's broken to pieces because I use it. Mm. Yeah, it's a good one. Sweet Holy Spirit. <laughs> ah, uh oh. you thinking and where the topics are hot feel free to comment whether we agree or not cuz he's got something to say sir walter jones sir walter jones he's got something to say sir walter jones sir walter jones jones Come on in. The water's fine. Yeah. Oh. oh. Wait, hold on. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Soul of the Soul of the Jones show. I'm here. It is the evening. Midday connection. No. Weekend edition. Baby. <clears throat> Hi, y'all. It's coming in the water's fine. Water's fine. Water's fine. Good to see you, Elizabeth. You came back, huh? 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 Akins is here. Miles is here. Uh oh, Miles is here. Uh, Valor J Jackson is here, and, and Lady for Justice of Justice is here, and uh, Nakia, Nakia, you came back. What? Uh, Clement is here, and Quarter, and Hawkins, and Johnson, and Ivy, and Bianca, and Hamer, and who? Tyson. Hey, oh, 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 it's a whole bunch of y'all here. Who was this from Puerto Rico, Mexico? Patricia Royster. So good to see you and the rest of y'all. Hey, y'all, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Pastors done gone wild. Y'all remember that stupid video back in the 90s, Girls Gone Wild? Hmm. Philly in his nails. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who joined me at the 2 o'clock sh uh, show, thank you. It was really 3 o'clock. We got out of church just a little, not too late. It's never too late. But we got out of church a little late. 
The word was good though. The word was real, real good. Elder Parker preached today. Good word, good word, good word. All right. So that was three o'clock today. I'm back again. And you can kind of tell that I enjoyed my rest. <laughs> my voice haven't came in just yet. Pastor's gone wild. Uh, this is a show that's uh, probably going to shake up some of you and your friends. So what? <laughs> this is something that we do all the time. We shake up the family. Uh, I'll, I put up a post, a Facebook post. Uh, this week that stirred up the hearts and the minds of the brethren. Okay, here's the post. Here's what I said. I said, pastors kept y'all in church all night because they had no jobs to go to on Monday. He didn't call a revival during your vacation time and call the fast on holidays. 199 people responded to that post, 219 comments. And out of that 219 comments, some of them were not so pleasant. <laughs> some of them were not too pleasant. Okay. And the ones that were not so pleasant were 99% clergy. Mm -hmm. All right. Come on now from Zimbabwe. Blessings to you. Uh, and the ones who didn't like it were the ones that were probably a little guilty of it. Probably. I don't know for sure. But could be. Could be. Because the actress, uh, uh, Demetri Pitt says, the truth hurts. Some of them outright denied this claim, even though 98% of the polls, 98% of the posts, 98% of them said, we agree. Y'all saw it on the screen, right? Because Ruth is asking, what did you post? So tell me y'all saw it on the screen. Because sometimes I, it, I don't show you the screen. And I'm thinking I'm showing you the screen. Did y'all see the post? Because if not, I'll show it to you again. Or I'll show it to you. Mm -hmm. you, just, you so I've experienced that before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard some feelings, Johnson. You saw it? Okay, thank you, Pitts. Yeah. Um, they hated the post. Hated it. And I was trying to be as nice as I could to tell you, how could you tell me that I'm lying? They outright told me I was lying. How could you tell me I was lying about that post when 98% of the people are telling you their experiences with you wild pastors? How? Could I be lying? Then I thought, well, these probably are young people who didn't experience this, number one. Number two, their pastor didn't keep them all night. Maybe there was just a Kojic thing, a Pentecostal thing. But I know some Baptist churches who kept you all night long when I was coming up in the 60s and the 70s. So how could you deny all of these people who told you what they experienced? There was a whole lot of you cannot do's. You couldn't go to the prom. I'm telling you what I come up under. Some of your pastors were a little more progressive and more free, a little more liberal. But in my generation, thank God my pastor was not that way. But my friends' pastors, they did not allow them to go to the prom. Especially if you was apostolic, you know, oh no. And when they finally started allowing you to go, you, your, somebody in your household had to be your chaperone, a deacon or one of the members of the church had to sh and stay there and watch you. I'm trying to tell y'all, this thing was all over the country. Come on, Lynette. Uh oh, Lynette. <laughs> 
Yeah. All over the country. And then I saw some of the posts saying, oh, thank God we had that. It kept us this and it kept us. We didn't need all of that abuse to keep us a certain way. I didn't need that abuse for me to be, be kept in the straight and the narrow because the pastor ain't had nothing else to do on Monday. So he kept us all night and then pushed us into revivals for a couple weeks, made us fast during holidays and all this stuff. That was abuse. Couldn't do nothing. So what did it do? This kind of carrying on caused pastors' children to hate them. I have too many PK friends. PK friends who hate their own fathers. Why? Because what I just put there, because the father, the pastor was married to the church. You have taken on somebody else's bride. The church belonged to Jesus. God gave that bride to Jesus Christ. And you took on Jesus' bride. You nasty. That was not your position to do that. You got a wife and kids at home and you took on Jesus' bride. Laying my babies on the pews for those late night services knowing they had to go to school. Forgive me and trying to praise him at the same time. I, man, I'm telling you how many nights we were at church all night and then, and then Monday morning we, we at school doing this. Walter, come to the board. <laughs> Walter, Walter, huh, huh, what's two plus two, um, um, the book of Genesis, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how bad it was, you stole Jesus' bride, so I'm going to talk to y'all about the position of pastoring, what the Bible said about it and what you need to do. Mm -hmm. What you need to do. All right. I'm going to talk about the qualifications of the elder. Who is he? In the Old Testament, the pastor term do pop up. He has given you pastors after his own heart. That term pastor do pop up in the old testament uh but the word would be rulers king james says pastor uh maybe we can find it uh what is it uh, jeremiah 3 i'm gonna show you something I have to show it to you because since I started talking about it, I now got to bring it up. Jeremiah 315. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what it says in my Bible. All right. La la Okay. This here is Jeremiah 3, okay? And here's what it says. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Look at the word pastor. What y'all see there? Y'all see something right there? I see two things surrounding pastor. Hmm. So if we go down to the 15... Uh-huh. Bam. There it is. It says rulers. Hmm. Then it says literally shepherds. Hmm. So why did they use rulers? Why did King James put 
pastors there when the word was rulers. Okay, because what happens is that poses a problem. And what problem is that? Well, the problem is what? Uh, the problem is First Peter chapter 5. That's the problem. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see here. Where's my my handy dandy stick here? That's a problem, because here's what First Peter say. All right, I need to focus. The elders which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a particular of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage. Oh, there's a one there too, but being in samples. So wait a minute. God gave them to Jeremiah pastors, which are rulers. But then this brother say, don't Lord. If they are rulers, shouldn't they Lord? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Those entrusted to you. Three. Hmm. That's interesting. How do we fix this problem? <laughs> huh? Can y'all fix it for me? This is why when y'all are reading King James, a lot of times y'all read in one passage where it says something read somewhere in the new testament where it says something else the juxtaposition of what you just read and try and teach an imbalanced message <laughs> we got a problem because you don't know mm -hmm. good to see you family uh, it was another form of manipulation. You were made to believe you had to be there, but your brain was telling you you need to sleep. What? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth said, add it. She, she capitalized it. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy got soul. It's good to see you. We're supposed to have a burden for souls, not put burdens on souls. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, lady. A pretty lady. <laughs> Why do I love that day? A pretty lady. I just, I just get excited when I see that name. Yeah, in balance. T Vox is back, y'all. Okay. So how do we fix this messology? Because uh, Peter was giving an example of what the pastor is supposed to be. Who is he? And he's telling them not to lord over the people. All right. So when you get to First Timothy, it gives you uh, a um, what an elder or pastor is. Ephesians four and eleven gives us the breakdown of this gift called the pastor when we first start seeing it in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh, joy. Joy. Uh-oh. Come on, joy. Obey those who have ruled over you was the phrase used. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, come on, come on. Now, 
What pastors did to manipulate you further was to tell you, touch not my anointed, nor what? <laughs> it was the greatest witchcraft in church history, and it's still used today. As if to say that the pastor is the only anointed person in the house. If that's the case, that house is jacked up. Number two, you all have overly generalized. No, I'm about to I'm about to generalize the term. But y'all have overly, like I said earlier today, you overly romanticized the word anointing. Anointing. So can I bust y'all's bubble right quick? Yes. Do my do no my prophets no harm. Touch not of my touch not of my anointing. All right, this was a song written back in Psalm, I believe. It was a song, S-O-N-G, that did not mean what the church made it to mean. The anointing, everybody on this, this here in the comment section, if you are saved, you are anointed. Every single one of you, you're anointed. What are you anointed to do? Well, every one of you also have a gift. And whatever that gift is, God has anointed you to do it. You have overly uh, upstaged the word anointed. King Saul was anointed. How do we know? He was a rascal, wasn't he? God really didn't want him to be king. The people wanted that, that king. But he still was anointed. Wait a minute. How is King Saul anointed? Because David says, I can't touch God's anointed. What does it mean then? Study for oneself will eliminate misuse of authority. Hey, the great Art Lewis is here. My nerdy, nerdy friend. <laughs> yeah, I love that boy. A bishop tried to use that on me. And I broke it down with that scripture. Uh, 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 <laughs> T-Vox, T T-Vox. Please hammer, don't hurt him. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I did, Jackie. See, Jackie been with me for years. <laughs> Jackie been with me a long time <laughs> Long time <clears throat> Come on Cortez mm -hmm. Yeah hey uh oh uh oh Sanders is here Lord help us When Sanders show up The show done shifted Yeah y'all are overly romanticized That word anointing I heard one pastor tell his congregation God didn't send them If he didn't send them Because God speaks through mm. Y'all see what I'm saying? <laughs> Jamie said, teach, man. <laughs> uh, anointing. If you are saved and you are, come on, come on, Rogers. Yes. The sheep had bug problems. I'm about to tell you what anointing is. I'm going to get back to Ephesians chapter four. Pitch, thank you for putting that up there. The sheep bad, had bug problems. <laughs> I don't know if I have any over here or not. Yeah. Uh, huh. The sheep had bug problems. And so the shepherd would take the oil and pour it over the sheep. And the oil would drip down the, f the main, uh, the, the face or the 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 wool <laughs> of the sheep D drip down his ears, over his eyes, and his nose. And what happened? So when the bugs would come uh, prior to him anointing the sheep, the bugs would come and enter into the crevices of the sheep. And it would get into the portals of the sheep and mess with the sheep's brain. 
Mm -hmm. And it would sometimes kill the sheep. So the shepherd would anoint the head of the sheep. So when the bugs would crawl on the sheep, it would slide some oil to me. Crisco would do just fine. So it wouldn't get into the orifices of the sheep. You understand? So the Bible says, Isaiah 10, I think it was. It shall come to pass in that day that his yoke shall be taken from off thy shoulder and the yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. What is this anointing? We're preaching this gospel right now. Once you have been chosen by God, you automatically, like the Holy Ghost baptizing you, you become anointed, which means to be set apart, set aside from the world. You belong to me, which makes you anointed to do whatever I have gifted you to do. So once King Saul became the king, he then was set aside and became God's choice. Uh, not his perfect will, but his what will? <laughs> Yet a will is a will to God and he was set aside. So David could not touch him because he knew God put him in that office. So are y'all set aside. You all are anointed. So when your pastor say, touch not my anointed, well, he pretty much saying nobody in the house should be touched. Y'all hear me. Let it be known there are no different levels of anointing. I hear this. Come on, Pips. Pips, you were, you were, you were here earlier and I, I saw some comments after the show. I wish I could have read them when I, because you was preaching. Yeah, it's permissive will. I did that show, huh? Who is anointed? Thank you, Amber Rogers. I, I, I knew I did something about that anointing because it was bothering me. I think I've done a show on everything known to man. I don't know if there's anything I've never done. Good Lord. I talked about. Donald Talley, bless it to you. So, let's get back to this pastor. Ephesians chapter 4, Pitts, is where Jesus, it says... But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Every one of us is given grace according to Christ's measure. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. This same Christ. Now that he ascended what is it that uh, but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? That is a part. Uh, some people call it hell. Hell is a mistranslation in uh, King James. It's actually Hades or Sheol. Sometimes Gehenna is used. I really don't care which word is used. Any place in that place is a separation from you and God. Whatever you want to call it. It's not a place you want to be. What's in the name? <laughs> you understand? Yeah, I ain't go to hell with the shield. All right, it's still hot. You rather you rather go to shield than hell? No problem. If you put oil, olive oil on the pews <laughs> and anoint them, you'll have higher. T <laughs> yeah, them <laughs> y'all crazy. They add extra. Uh -huh. <laughs> y'all are crazy today. Tonight, all right? Then he said, He that descended is the same also that ascended up from above all heavens that he might feel all things. Mm-hmm. Hey, come on, Beverly. <laughs> it's all hot. <laughs> yeah. Always come up when the pastor knows the people in the church wants to fight him. <laughs> our pretty, our pretty lady. <laughs> fire by any other name <laughs> still burns <coughs> exactly all right <coughs> now <coughs> 11 here it is 
11 says, and he gave some. All right, let me, I, I, I got to use the camera. Okay. I need y'all to see this. And he gave some. Now, 11 is telling me what that. That means something going on. Well, let's go now. I'm glad y'all reading this with me so y'all don't think I'm lying. All right, here's 11. He himself. Hmm. I see. I'm curious on what uh, NLT says. So he gave some apostles. They got an asterisk right there. They're getting ready to expound on the apostles somewhere in my book. There's an asterisk. That means it's, it's in here somewhere. Okay. He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some <laughs> pastors is asterisk too and teachers. This is sometimes, most times called five-fold ministry. Sometimes it's called the ascension gifts. Okay. Sometimes it's called four-fold ministry because it says pastor and teachers. Notice he didn't say, and he gave some pastors and some teachers. It's placed here together. Preachers fight over this all the time. Now, pastors should be good teachers. If you are a pastor, you should be ad adept, inept, adept, inept, all those to teach. I'm going to show you that in Timothy. Okay. This position is a position that stays home. Stay your behind home. You don't travel. He do the evangelist. The apostle travels as well. The prophet travels. You Stay home. You understand? Okay, now. He gave some. For the perfecting of the saints. Oh, there's a number one right there. Number 12. Let's see. What does it say? Uh, where is it? it? It probably continues on another page somewhere. Okay, I don't have time to look for it. It's somewhere. It might be on this another this up, up here somewhere. Okay, I have to look for it. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body. So these are gifts. Now it never says office in here. It never says office. It says Jesus went down and he came up, and these gifts are the people. You understand? So when he came up out of Hades, when he set captivity captive, he brought gifts and he presented these gifts, which are these people. There's a fight over if this can be a woman or not. I did that show already. It's a fight if this could be a woman or not. I did that show already. OK. For perfecting. For work and for edifying those three. That's what they're for. When you get further down in the thing, it says till. Whoa. Uh -oh. That's until. We all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son. Wait a minute. So God is going to give us these. Oh, he has given us these gifts until a certain time. Hmm. And let's see. I thought I saw a number here. Oh, 13 says un, in two. Till we come all, till we all come in two. Mm, mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's, so Tommy said we ain't there yet. <laughs> we sure ain't. <laughs> All right, so then uh, you then start to see you start then you'll see another thing in first what Corinthian first Corinthian 
tw- uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Well, then, what do we do with this? <laughs> Come on, Amber. <laughs> Rogers, you own it. All right. I did that show too. Can women be pastors and bishops? I did. I, I, what is it that I haven't talked about? Well, 1 Corinthians 12 said, watch this. And God has set some, is that some again, in the church. First, he gave y'all apostles. They are the foundation. Secondary, he gave prophets. So the church was laid the foundation on the apostles and the prophets. Laid it. Third, he gave the teachers, which most pastors or apostles or prophets or uh, chief apostles and master prophets don't acknowledge the teachers. They don't not acknowledge them. They don't ordain them. They don't have special services for teachers. Uh, they, they're not invited to all of the reindeer games. Teachers. Yet God says I set them third. Then after that, miracles and then healings. Wait a minute. Y'all have put healings first up here. That's all y'all doing is trying to have these healing lines and ain't nobody being healed in your churches. Helps and governments and diversities of tongues. Diversity of tongues is at the bottom. Yet y'all put this first in y'all's churches, apostolics and kojics. I'm confused. But the, but I'm Sir Walter Jones is placed third in the in in the church. But nobody want to hear me because I'm not uh, prophesying riches and wealth and prosperity and all this other stuff. Now today I gave some prophetic words at two o'clock to some of the people out there, and my inbox was flooded with. Words of confirmation from several people saying I was praying to the Lord today about this. And the Lord heard me and had you to speak today. So a person who is a a radical uh, who gets puffed up will hear these words that I heard from y'all today about how I confirmed what God said to you and a guy like me will go down there and try to find a license to become the, uh, a master prophet because what I said today was accurate. No, the Lord was using me at 2 p.m. at that moment in time. We shut the clock down and God says, speak to these individuals. You don't speak to these people yet. Speak to these individuals because I heard their cry and speak to them. Because they esteem you high. They'll hear you. So I spoke at that moment. And then I didn't speak. When God didn't say speak. I didn't speak to some of you. I didn't speak a word. What is that? You have to be obedient. To the spirit of God. When you get so caught up. Into. Your gift. When you get so caught up in your gift. You go, eh, this is why I get excited when a person gets up there and speak for just a few minutes. And I get so more excited when they sat down. Yeah, I'm excited that you're done. When you've had enough, when you run out of words to say, sit down. You got the church high you, and they're up on their feet and you really blessing the house. And then you stay up there for 30 more minutes. Because you got excited that people were saying amen loud. Before you know it, you see people start sitting down one by one. It's time for you to sit down too. Don't do it. Run for us. <laughs> yes. Now. The words that I gave don't make me a prophet. But what the Lord does do in using me is give me word of knowledge and word of wisdom. All right. Well, let's go here. I want y'all to see this. (laughs) Pitts, you crazy today. (laughs) I see your comment. I'm afraid to put that on on the jumbo try. Okay. 
Well, let's look at this. Let's look at the spiritual gifts, okay? For to one is given by the spirit of the word of wisdom. The Lord gave me that today. To another on the word of knowledge, the word gave, the Lord gave me that today by the same spirit. He told me what to say because I have knowledge on some, some things in the spirit. And then he told me what to tell you to do with it. And then it got, and then it shut off. I was done. There were no, no prayer lines, no prophetic lines. No, it, it was done. It shut off to another faith, healing, working of miracles to another prophecy. Wait a minute. That tells me there's a difference between prophecy, word of knowledge and word of wisdom or if he would not have put it there. And then there's a discerning of spirits. When I see these these uh, trolls come over here, I discern their spirits. The Lord will use me one time sometimes and then it shuts off. He's done with me. Until he uses me again. What has happened is the Lord has used men one time. Because they need to use you at that time to speak a word. And then you get so boast and caught up in it. And then what happens? All of a sudden you are a master prophet. And I can count. Literally. I can go back and count the time that God used me in a mighty way. Where I would travel across the, 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 the country. And I would be. Usually I'm somewhere in a car. I'm in the shower. I'm on a Greyhound bus. I told y'all the story I was going to, I was traveling to Florida. It's a two day journey on the Greyhound bus. And the Lord put this woman on my mind and I couldn't sleep on that bus for hours. I had this woman on my mind and I, and I saw this woman uh, laying, she was in the bosom of Jesus. I don't know what Jesus looked like, but I knew it was him. And Jesus was literally rocking her in his arms. He was rocking her. She was crying. And I couldn't get this out of my head. I'm like, why did, Why am I thinking about this woman? I, had, I knew who she was, but I hadn't seen her in a decade. And I didn't even know if I was going to see her in Florida. I, have no, I had no idea was I was going to see her. And I'm like, God, why had this woman in my mind? And so uh, I get to to uh, Florida and I'm, minist I'm not ministering. I'm just having a great time there with my friends or what have you. And then I decide to go to church and I walk in that church and there that woman is. And I says, God, now how, what do I do next? He said, wait. And the pastor knew me. And I sat down and he waved at me and he said, can you get on the organ? And I got on the organ and started playing and. <laughs> and he, they have a service and then he gets up to preach. And as he gets up, he looks at me and says, let's have words from Elder Jones. Was that Elder then? Yes. Let's have words from Elder Jones. And I gets up to go to the mic. She gets up and walk out. Not because I get up to walk on the mic. It's because something got her attention. I don't know if it was a phone call or something. So she gets up and walk out and I gets to the mic and I'm like, here's my opportunity. She ain't here. So God says, speak. And I begin to speak and address the house. And then she comes back in the room. And then the Lord says, speak to her. And I did. And I told her the vision I saw on the Greyhound bus. And she busted out in tears. Uncontrollable tears. And I got frightened. Because <laughs> that was one of my first times prophesying. Or having a word of knowledge. I sat down and the pastor said he passed the mic to her, says testify. And she says, last night I was in a trance. I was dreaming. And I was praying. And I remember falling backwards and Jesus caught me and he began to rock me. In his arms. And I'm like. Why am I. A thousand miles away. Seeing her. Being rocked. 
in the arms of Jesus, the Lord was stirring up something in me. After, it, it, more to the story that I'm not going to tell, and after that was over, all while my trip, while I was there, she kept calling me, Come on, Prophet Jones, what else did the Lord have for you? What else the Lord, I, I laugh it off. For, come on, Prophet Jones. And wherever we went, Prophet Jones, Prophet Jones in the house, what the Lord said. And I finally said, stop calling me that. I don't see nothing else in your life. I don't see nothing. Because if I get pulled in to that, then I would be like Paul, and who was that with Paul when this woman, this witch, pretty much, kept following them and saying, listen to these men of God. These are good men of God. And she kept following them. Any man would accept that praise. They didn't care whether it was a witch or not. Men like praise. They're eagles, uh, you know, they love the eagle thing. And Paul got perturbed and finally turned to her and rebuked her. Was it Silas? He turned to her and rebuked her. Shut up and sit down. So I finally had to say, whoa, sis. You got to stop calling me that. The people are hearing me. Now everybody going to want me to prophesy to them. I have no words for them. And the Lord didn't use me in that way for a while. Well, maybe a couple months later, I'm sitting in church. I was married at the time. I'm sitting in church and the woman behind me, I heard God say, the woman behind you have a heart problem. I'm like, God, we've been sitting in church for a good hour. They're getting ready to dismiss. I, I, the woman have a heart problem. He says, pray for her. I can't. What do I, I don't understand why you why me the, the, the place was packed dollar a day for <laughs> faith place Man, I'm in trouble when faith place pop up <laughs> one guy says a dollar <laughs> yeah so s service was over my wife was with me and I, and I turned to the lady I says, Miss, I'm, I don't mean to bother you, but I hear the Lord says that you have a heart problem. And I don't know if it's a broken heart or what. And if, if you will, I'm going to ask my wife to pray for you. I didn't want to touch her. She said, Sure. And my wife went to praying for her and I walked away because I was nervous. I was like, let her take care of that because <laughs> let me say hello to everybody and good night. All right. So I heard my wife praying for her. I looked at the on my peripherals and I walked away. And then I came back when my wife got through. I said, OK, babe, let's go. And the, the father was standing there next to the young lady. He said, sir, come here. Thank you for praying for my wife. I mean, my daughter. I says, oh, uh, yeah, you're, you're welcome. He says, she have, uh, we was at the doctor this week and they've discovered a blockage or a murmur or whatever you call that thing where the heartbeat doesn't tick like it's supposed to. Abronia call it my ticker. <laughs> it doesn't tick and she may have to go into surgery this week. And I was startled. And when I got in the car, I, be, I, I, I got sad. Like Jonah did when he finally did what God told him to do. Who was that? Did the brother go sit up under a tree? I got sad. Why? Number one, fear came over me. I didn't know how this, that would be received. Number two, I didn't know if that was God or not. Number three, I said to my wife, I told her that. I believe that he was a broken heart. She said, babe, why don't, why do you think that it was not a broken heart? They could all be connected, she said. And number two, she says, you need to seek the Lord. 
because he's obviously using you and you need to tap in. Y'all give me these medical terms. What is it? Bradycadia. See, wow. Arrhythmia. Yeah. Murmur. Yeah. One of them things. Oh, absolutely. And that kept happening over a short period of time, but then it would stop. Did I go down into the prophetic store and get me a license? No. But periodically, I, I will walk up to someone and God says, speak to this person right here. This one thing. And I will speak to this person. One time I spoke to, I was at Tanil's church and I spoke to this person. And I told him, you are, are you a bodyguard? You should be, you should be a bodyguard for this man. He, began, he said, that's what I do for a living. <laughs> I said, yeah. And then I began to speak to him about his secular job, how he transferred that into the spirit world. In, 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 in the spiritual and he was amazed like no one has ever spoken to me like that and he said tell me more I'm like I don't know anymore what are you talking about tell you more who, matter, matter, matter of fact who are you I'm, where am I <laughs> where, where am I <laughs> I don't know nothing the Lord has given me this one time and that's it he's done with me Lonnie said 99 cent <laughs> I gotta go get me a 99 cent license so when word got out that I was doing that, people was hitting me up in the inbox and text saying, can you speak a, a, a word to me, a word in my life? I'm like, no, I can tell you that I can pray for you, but I don't have a prophetic word for you. That ain't my gift. Let God use me how he uses me periodically. And when he shuts it off, I shut it off. And it's like the scriptures. If the scripture is mute, I am mute. We have raised up these men and women and they have become, we've made monsters out of them. Come on, Pitts. Yes, he is. Many pastors and ministers are fixated on themselves and refuse to let anyone change the way that, yes. Beverly Williams? Mm. Is there a such thing as a prophetic house? Absolutely not. Corey Brookins, the educator, is here. I, when Corey Brookins come here, <laughs> he's about to be some education, y'all. Bless you. Thank you, Ellie Banks, for the super chat. Boy, you, a, you sure bless the house, man. You know how to bless the house. I believe that's one of your gifts, Elliot Banks. There is a gift of giving. And you are exemplifying that, Banks. Too many people don't understand this fact. When God is finished, we should be fin Come on, faith-based, placed. <laughs> I always call it faith-based. It is faith-based, <laughs> okay? He's, he was done with me, done, done. One day, their the sister, ooh, Victoria. See, <laughs> Victoria also was the big giver, too. Big giver, Victoria. What God says is more than enough. His word is powerful. Yes, some have a prophetic word for every day and monthly prophetic word. That's yes, divination. Joan, Joan, Joan. That's it. I heard a thought uh, that said, "Why are you tripping over a term that appears only?" <laughs> Harris. Ooh, Harris. <laughs> that's good stuff. All right, so let's talk about this, this, this pastor bishop. The Greek word translated bishop is episkopos. All right, the source of, uh, of our English word, episcopo. Um, you know, King James uses the presbyter in here. But when it comes to Timothy, the word bishop is used. And unfortunately, uh, the hierarchical positioning of bishop, we have changed it to mean something else than what it meant in First Timothy chapter 3. It's a supervisional role, by the way. We've changed the meaning and we've made these cogent bishops 
high, even though it was not a part of the ascension gifts in Ephesians chapter four, we put the bishops in there and made them apostles in a sense. You understand? <laughs> so, uh, so here, the bishop is the superintendent. Okay. Superintendent. The overseer or the officer is in general charge of the congregation. So in the Bible, bishops are also called elders. First Timothy chapter five and 19. And then they're called pastors. All right. Elders. Pastors. The qualifications of the bishop or the elder or the pastor is found in the third chapter of Timothy. Here is a trustworthy saying. Whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. If you desire it, I don't, it don't mean you're going to get it. It just means you desire it. Paul says covered the gift that is most helpful. Man, I, am I in trouble yet? Huh? I tend to get in trouble a lot. Okay. Now I got my Bible here for a reason. Okay, because y'all think I'm coming out of my brain with st strange fire. <laughs> All right, here's what King James say. It say. It asks these questions, are all apostles, prophets, teachers? No, all, all do heal. No, all speak in tongue. No, 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 no. Then it says, but covet. Earnestly the what? The best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Ooh, 31. Well, it say right down here. Desire. Mm -hmm. So you got it. So when you see covet, that could cause a problem because is uh, covet is looked to in a negative way in the English language today. Thou shalt not covet. <laughs> King James decided to use that word. When the word is desire. So covered and desire in today's vernacular don't mean the same thing. Although in order to cover it, you must desire it. Yes. But though this word is more negative than the word desire is in a sense. So he's saying desired earnestly the best gift. And what's the best gift? The gift that needs to operate in this house in this season. So the gift of tongues don't need to operate in this house. Everybody speak the same language. We don't. Why should I earnestly desire the gift of tongues in this English speaking house? Don't need it. I may just need a gift of uh, discerning of spirits in this house because I got people from all over the, 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 the country, the neighborhood or the city, what have you. I got people from all walks of life and there's some folk in here that uh, might be possessed with some stuff and I may need that particular gift for this house. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. My church called me Reverend, Jimmy says. Now, some many people, many of my scholarly brothers have a problem with the word reverend and it's usually used in the Baptist church the world likes to use reverend a lot no matter if you're kojic apostolic or not they don't they don't use the word elder they'll say reverend <laughs> in political terms you're reverend uh -huh. cover the best gift no wonder people are so mean and jealous <laughs> yeah come on you stay in trouble <laughs> I do I do. Mm-hmm. I sure do. They get highly upset when you explain to them how they have elevated the office be beyond what the Bible says. Mm. 
why do some of these bishop act as if they're doing God a favor? <laughs> Ooh, we uh, they go past go and keep collecting two hundred dollars and give the <laughs> y'all in trouble. I thought I was in trouble. All right, the qualifications. A trustworthy thing. Whoever aspires to be an overseer, desire he desires a noble thing. Now he says the overseer is to be, a, is to be above reproach. Mm. Oh man, <laughs> blameless. <clears throat> You should have a good name everywhere you go. If you want to be a bishop, you got to have a good name. Unfortunately, I worship with the Kojic folks and many of these bishops don't have a good name. They don't. Here's where I get my license snatched again. A lot of times after these bishops get sick and die is when they're dirt is revealed. <clears throat> and not only is the dirt revealed, their illegitimate children also are revealed. <sighs> Misappropriations of funds and theft, misconduct revealed. And the hidden third wife is revealed and you're called the bishop we got a problem Corey what are we going to do about this so the bible says blameless I'm in trouble man I'm in trouble <clears throat> pastor Razor you here because I need help okay. you got any bodyguards at your church so he says Faithful to his wife, and here's where the problem with women bishops come into play. And they will try and turn this in King James, especially by saying, Oh man, I've seen some of the most silliest defenses to become the bishop of a one wife. And be a woman. I've seen the defense. Faithful to his wife. Temperate. Self-controlled. And respectable. Hospitable. And able to teach. If you have a pastor. Who cannot teach. Why? And how did he become an elder? First of all. Who took him through ordination? Or who did he pay to get that license? We have a governor here that went to jail for passing out trucker's license. And accidents were happening in Illinois. And he left his tracks at the governor's desk. You who are ordaining these elders, you need to be cited. You need to be silenced. You need to be, what's that word they use when a congressman acts up in misconduct? They Is the word sanction? You need to go back and sit in some council and we need to find out why did you feel the authority and need to ordain this man? And Paul says, don't be quick to lay hands on these men. Y'all took that to mean that the, the men's got bad spirits. And so we can't lay hands on them because that bad spirit transferred to me. That is not what it means. The laying on of hands was to ordain or send someone out, charge them, send them out. To do the work. 
So that's what he says. Don't be quick to lay hands on him because you will be partakers of this man's uncontrollable passions. Because you laid hands on them. So you need to be censured. Make it BW. You need to be censored for sending them out. And God says, I'm going to hold you responsible for their misconduct. So we got all these Kojic elders and pastors and bishops walking around here. They were ordained because they knew the man who knew the man and they got in and they ran in rampant and they're sleeping with your wife. I've heard too many stories. One man walked in on the bishop and the, the wife was bending over to get some out of the cabinet and the bishop reached over and just patted her behind just pow pow and the man walked in and saw this and he was in so much shock he couldn't believe it and he didn't know what to do or what to say he was a deer in headlights a lot of that stuff is covered until men die And one reason why this stuff is covered is because you need that man. So what we do, we become devoted to these bishops and pastors because they came and they helped me when my mama died. They came to the funeral and paid for this and, and, and bought the food and they, they gave us a love offer. So I'm dedicated to this man. And I know a man today, he, he is being treated like a dog by his pastor, like a dog. His pastor rides his behind. But he can't leave because his excuse is that man was there for my mom. You are a fool. He riding you. He not even using grease. At least go down to Walmart. Get you some KY or something. That man is dry humping you in the spirit. <laughs> He's abusing you, treating you like a little harlot, like a little like y'all are cellmates. Because he helped you with your mama. Abuse. This is witchcraft and control. And this this man is lording over you and you can't see it. You enjoying the dry hump. Is this too much for you sensitive people? Hmm, y'all too holy for this kind of talk? Huh? That y'all was y'all need to go over there to Allen Parr. He's not as hard as I am. I love Allen Parr. He's one of my favorite teachers. But he more humble than me. That man left a mark in your office. Blessing to you, Harris. Yeah, you're walking funny because the man did a nice act for you years ago for your mom. <clears throat> you walking like an Egyptian. These boots were made for walking. How stupid are you? He can't. He's still there. He can't leave. He can't leave. You a special kind of dumb. Forrest Gump is looking at you and say, stupid is what stupid does. Forrest is just looking down at you and say, you know, mama always said, I'm going to meet something that's more stupid than me. I met them. I just met them. I've traveled around the world. I met presidents, but I never thought I'd meet someone as stupid as you. Mama, I met the man. Who is he, Forrest? He's stupid. 
that box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. I found one. One stupid man. He is under the influence of witchcraft. I believe that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, I said it. Hirelings, yes. Come on, Joan. Y'all bring me back in because I keep, I see his face and I, whenever I see him, I, I want to tell him in his face. Was it as good for you as it was for him last night? Hmm? Did you get, did you, did you take a smoke when you went to church after service? Hmm? Did you smoke? Hmm. Y'all know I can't tolerate this in the pulpit, right? I can't on my show. Locked in churches out of false sense. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I ain't never stopped praying for him. Never stop. But that's some kind of stupid. Y'all like, that's insensitive. You think I care right now? Hmm? I talk to him a trillion times. Bruh, run. Even Forrest, he ran. His girls say, run, Forrest. I'm telling you, Run. Nah, brother, but he, so my calling him that is justified. <laughs> Corey said, this is a special kind of pulpit. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Y'all are liable to get anything over here. Anything. So where was I before I? My, f my flush rose up. Faithful to his wife. Respectable. Able to teach. Not violent but gentle. Not quarrelsome. Not a lover of money. He must manage his own fat. <clears throat> Y'all praying? Because I got to continue reading this right here. Because this is where my. The heat. The heat is on. It's where the heat rises in my house. This portion right here. This is where the heat rise. Yes, Risha. Jezebel comes in a male and female spirit. Jezebel is a chameleon. You know what a chameleon is? <laughs> it changes not just its looks or its spots, but it also can change its form. Male and female. Jezebel married King Ahab. He was just as much as Jezebel as Jezebel was. Y'all understand that? He's the master of camouflage. Yes. Chameleon. So it says he must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him. And he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. The pastor's children hate him. Now I was speaking about Pastor Razor. A few minutes ago, I don't know if that was him over that Lonnie with the faith based faith place account. But Pastor Razor, children love this man. Why do they love this man? I was on the phone with him. Matter of fact, I was telling y'all about his book, um, the Black Book. <laughs> um, the man. I call the man because I, uh, because I was, uh, I text him because the, his biblically black and blessed book was not in print. 
And I told him, my people want to buy the book, man. And he told me, oh, I dropped the ball in my bag. I need to get this, blah, blah, blah. And then he said, uh, I got to go because I'm in Hawaii. <laughs> I'm like, pastor, you where? I'm, I'm in Hawaii. Me and the wife right now. How did you get? Why are you over there? He said, because my kids love me. That's why. <laughs> His kids love him. The in-laws, too, love him. <laughs> That's a good man right there. Pastor, unfortunately, the opposite, I've been seeing a lot. Why are you not a part of your father's church or you're not having a mention? Because I don't like him. Thank you, Lonnie. Are you next to him? Oh, well, no, it's 1030. I doubt if you're next to him. He should be next to his wife and you should be next to your wife. <laughs> Just because the narcissist in today's vernacular. Yeah. Yes. Mm hmm. He must. His children must hold him in reverence. Y'all. The King James says gravity or grave. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? This is the part that rides me, y'all. Why are you at church? You, pastor, at church trying to tell my kids and my wife what to do. And your kids, you don't even know where they are. Your house is in disarray. You come to church at in one car and your wife come to church in another car. Now, that's not always negative because sometimes they have two different schedules. So I can't fight that. But some of y'all do that because you don't want to be in the same car. And then when you get in the pulpit, my wife did so. And she's the lemon in my lemonade. And she's the sugar in my tea. And she's the cream of my crop. She's the slave in my cotton field. <laughs> I'm not sure where that come from. And then soon the service is over. If they get in the same car, they ain't talking to each other. And when they get to the house, he go on the west wing and she go on the east wing. And when it's time to go to bed at night, he sleep in the one room and she sleep in the master bedroom. I'm not telling you what I thought or what I heard. I'm telling you what I have seen with my own eyes. I have literally moved a pastor out of the master bedroom. He bought a bed and said, can you come help me get this bed in the house? And we got the bed in the house and put, he put it in, a, in the guest room so that he can sleep in the guest room. And his wife can sleep in the main room. I have physically done this. I've been in this, I've been in holiness a long time. Long time. I worked with the creative director on a church recording this week. This weekend, he mentioned most pastors are just actors. Funny, but I think it's ooh wow, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mister Nick said two different schedules always. Please, <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> I felt I felt your pain right there. <laughs> Jamie, you cracked me up. Ain't it, man? <laughs> I don't know why that that just that's funny to me. Okay. So it goes on. He must not be a recent convert. What? Did y'all see that? He can't be new to the ministry or to the denomination or to holiness or to. He can't be a recent convert. 
or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. <laughs> That's in the Bible, y'all. <laughs> That's crazy. He got saved yesterday. Now he's your pastor. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Paul also instructs Timothy on the things that exemplify the teaching of a good minister. Good minister. All right, in Titus. When I messed up and got in trouble with the law, uh, when I walked into my bank, they heard about it, and the the the, the women and the, the, the clerks were like, not him. That's a good man, not him. Why? My grocery knew I was a good man. The banks knew I was a good man. The, 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 all of the social areas that I go, my, the restaurant waitress knew I was a good man. Everybody in town knew I was a good man. I always spoke. I always did good. I always tipped real, real well. I tipped my hat. When I got in trouble, they says, no way, not him. You who are bishops should have that name. They should say, no way, not him. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul repeats the qualifications of a bishop, elder, pastor in this letter to Titus. An elder must be blameless, faithful to his wife, a man whose children believe are and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is has self-control, upright, holy, disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose sound doctrine, y'all. Man, listen. Can't be pastor. He just learning about Jesus. And right. All right, y'all got any questions? I did say I was going to ask if y'all have any questions this last few few minutes on the show. I'm sure I don't went over clock keeper. I didn't got excited. There's about 200 of y'all here. And some of y'all are going to say, why does he talk this way towards the church? Because you're not. Because I can. When I talk about atheism and the danger of it, you don't come by. This is what I had to tell the people on Facebook who came by there and were trying to rebuke me for saying this about their pastors. These pastors are holding y'all all night long because they ain't got no work to go to. They don't have nowhere to go to, so they hold y'all hostage. But when I talk about the atheists, y'all don't, you pastors don't shop by. When I talk about financial um, stability and generational wealth, my classes on Tuesday, y'all don't stop by here. You don't come by. You don't watch the show. It's not educational. I'm not educational. It's not salacious to you enough. It's just not. When I talk about politics, when I talk about this vaccine, I want to talk about y'all who are paying so much attention to conspiracy theorists and all this stuff. You don't stop by. You just say, all right, all right, all right, brother. Come on, come on, come on. Doesn't that cause division? Don't me talking about Republicans and Democrats cause division? Hmm? So when, when I talk about the church, all of a sudden, that caused division? When I talk about the musician, you say amen. I talk about the mother's board, you say amen. The deacons, amen. But when I bring up the pastor, you say, whoa, bro, you went too far. Shouldn't we talk about some something else? You being an elder, that's what they said. You being an elder, you should, shouldn't you, should you not be talking about this? We already have enough division around us in the church hall. Everybody going to the church, and so someone like you should not be talking. Really? Why would I be in something and sit back and watch it self-destruct 
and implode and say nothing because it's filling up your coffers. How is Jamal Brown a bishop? <laughs> That's a good question. Some, uh, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, can you imagine how God feels about the church? I, ooh, tell me about it. Is there a difference between a bishop, overseer, pastor who has all these qualities and uh, just doesn't know but doesn't mean harm? has the qualities with intent to deceive men same qualities different intention uh was was that a question or was that a statement harris because i don't know when you came in here but because i did give i did give a breakdown of uh the bishop over the, the bishop and the overseer and the elder is the same thing really the same thing a bishop is an elder all elders are not bishops all bishops are elders. Does that make sense? <laughs> Corey, you should have been at the two o'clock uh, show I did. Hey, I don't know if your statement would have been the same because I went plum off. <laughs> uh, some people want to be, uh, yes, stroked. What's the deal when first ladies are MIA, but pastor wants my family and I to bust down the church doors eight times a week. <laughs> oh, man. Miss Anig. Uh, yeah. We got 99 problems. <laughs> Come on, Lonnie. I know your wife is like, why is this man's voice in our bed? <laughs> Did you say you with your wife right now? Uh-huh. Own spiritual suicide. Yes. Oh, that was a question, Harris. Can you retype that question in a way that I can understand? Because you gave a whole lot of bullet points and I needed a little simplified a little bit because uh, I didn't get it. That I didn't get it. What are your thoughts about being an archbishop in the church today? It's silly. Because if y'all ask me a question, I'm going to tell y'all what I think. And it, you may, it may not sit with you that well it may not sit with you that well what do I think about an archbishop today it's silly master prophet silly silly and I've got friends they come on here who are archbishops and master prophets silly next question some of the most silliest things y'all doing today and you've been getting away with it for a generation yes quit calling the pastor so fast husband love Ooh, holla at your girl I <laughs> love that name all my YouTube friends got some names yeah Beverly thank you a girl I love you I have a 12 year old who will turn 13. He doesn't seem to have compassion or empathy for people. Is there something I can do to help develop this in him? Angela Fraser. <clears throat> the Catholic Church believe that 12 is the, uh, the age of accountability. It's really silly. <clears throat> and some of you who are Pentecostal believe the same thing. If the kid is 12 years old and, and they're acting this way, um, he didn't start doing it last night. This was a process over time. Go back. Like if if you lost something, you have to go back and re-step and find out what you did here, where you turned here, where you did this, where you, what happened, where here. All right. Who raised the child? Did you raise him? Did the husband raise him? Did they have help? Okay. Uh, then you got to look at what's going on at the school. What's happening there? Are you checking up on the child's whereabouts and what where what the child have gotten themselves into what's going on in its surrounding. Try to find the process of elimination here and, and attack that thing. You may have to remove the child from a particular situation until you can find out what's going on. When they, a person is sick, they go to the doctor and the doctor begin to ask them, what did you eat? 
What did you drink? Are you allergic to this? Blah, blah, blah. And I can't fix this problem until I find uh, out if there is something that's causing the problem. See, I can give you medicine to clear that up. You're going to go back and waddle back in that mess. Blessing to you, Rochelle Bell. You can go back and waddle in it. So now we got to find out how we can remove this from your diet or your habit or your day to day duty. Remove that. Then when I give you this fix, it will help you and you can live uh, a prosperous life. All right. Now, outside of prayer and uh, going to God for this child, we need to find out naturally what's going on in the child's life. Why? Because I have to be real with y'all because. I have discovered that we have overly romanticized this too. This is oil. I know you can see right through it because it's green. <laughs> All right. We have poured oil on these, these people who have issues and we send them back to incestuous problems and issues and all kind of confusion and blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. So we need the spirit. We need people to pray. Yes. But first is natural. Is not first natural. That was the question asked. And then spirit. We need to talk to these children and find out what's going on. You can pray until you get foam in your mouth, but talk and find out. Talk to me. This is why I, I make sure that my children put trust in me. Notice the elder, the, the bishop. Remember what I said there in first Timothy. All right. The children fear this man because there's a level of trust. That was built. And my son and my daughter, even though they my son is in his 30s, my daughter almost 30. And at that age, they still respect and trust me because I've built that up. I talk to them before I'm praying for them or with them. I'm going to talk to them Sit down. Let's talk. OK, let's look at every area of your life and see what's going on in there where the devil has gotten in. And let's remove this cancerous cell from you, because if we don't remove this, then it will spread throughout your body and you are no good. What's going on? And sometimes the person who can do this is someone outside of the family. Counselors are so needed in this in these cases. They do a world of good without counselors. I don't know where I would be today. My mother and father could do all they could do. But my father was at work and my mother was taking care of the kids. The school counselor helped me. Y'all understand. This doesn't make sense to any of you. <clears throat> now I got to go back up and see what's going on with the questions. So I don't know if that answered your question or not. And we can take this to the inbox and I can continue. Uh, a Angela Fraser. You're another dear friend of mine. Uh, two men. Both manipulate. Both lower their positions over members. But one is intentional. Yes. And the other doesn't know better. Oh, yeah. Marjorie, if you don't know better, somebody drop the ball. The intentional man will be punished by God <clears throat> in time. The other guy who's doing stuff, he's doing it like y'all speaking in tongues. You, you're doing it because you heard someone else do it and you're repeating their words. It's learned behavior, glossolalia. So these men who are, who are preachers or pastors or bishops, what have you, they're in there and God never called them. They think that God called them and they think they have this gift they, and they think that they're this and that. And, but, but somebody put them up there. Somebody. Their father in the gospel pushed them in that position and they they are they're doing all kind of stuff. And nobody's bold enough to sit them down and say. Shut up. I'm going to have to silence you. I'm going to have to silence you. Uh, I thought Archbishop came from the Catholic Church. Here comes. A, yes, it did. You can have a master's degree in all curriculums, but there was no master's in biblical. Ooh. Believe me, I looked. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. What is your take on the 501c3 debate? Should we still attend church under that? Uh, Millie Ali, uh, great question. Ali, great, great question. I, I did a show on the 501c3. Um, Amber or Deatra, they, they're always fast on finding my shows. 
I did an entire show on the 501c3. If, if one of you can find that, please and put that link uh, on YouTube. You'd have to put it on YouTube because if you put it on Facebook, they can't hit the link if they're on YouTube. You have to use the same platform. All right. Uh, 501c3 uh, is a problem for the church. It's a big problem for the church. Spiritually, especially spiritually, it's a problem. Uh, because if you are 501c3 and you are a uh, non-for-profit organization like a church, then you are a creature of the state or a ward or creature of the state. That's what the document says. The average church never really read all of the bullet points of the 501c3. You understand? So you, the church don't belong to God. It belongs to the state. You don't need to be a 501c3 to, to uh, not have to pay taxes. Or, or to say that you are a church. You don't need that. You just register as a church and there you are. You don't need the 501c3. You think you do, but you don't. Bishop uh, Woodrow Dawkins. Okay, what are you saying here? Hey amen. Look at that. All right, all right, all right. I got a bishop who said hey amen. Ooh, I got nervous when I saw your name. <laughs> yeah. Um... Amen, Angela Frazier. Thank you. Let's take this to the inbox because I'm concerned. If that's your child, I'm concerned. Because I know you to be an upright person. So I'm concerned. Counselors for young <clears throat> people outside of the church who are versed in that specific area are needed. We can't pray the gay away, so to speak. Yeah, right. Sometimes we need. Yeah, outside. That's it. Yes, that's it. You can't keep bringing those people to these children to church and let the pastor just pray over them or a whole bunch of oil. They just go home oily. Oil of ole. No, they need counseling. Uh, why is it business? Why is it business as usual in, in a pandemic in the church? Shouldn't there be a change? Yes. Great question. That's a great question. Uh, did Michelle ask a question? Who's quoting? Who's quoting? Um, that is a actually great question. The pandemic showed something here. The little guy became relevant. Me, a guy like me, became relevant. I became a a mega church during the pandemic. The words I was saying prior to the pandemic wasn't being listening. They wasn't adhering to my message. They were like, "Whatever you you." Social media pastors, you Facebook pastors, you YouTube pastors, they would call me. They said that like they would, we used to call Hispanics Chicanos in Chicago. You know, Chican Chicano was a derogatory term. Like Christian was really derogatory uh, at Antioch. It wasn't, uh, like you didn't want to be, um, you know, related, uh, you know, put in the, in the, the pool of Christian you didn't want it. All right. So they were like, these Facebook pastor. Look at these. Uh, they ain't got no church. They ain't got no members. They ain't got blah, blah, blah. And they laughed at us. And God came and shut it down. And the same ones who were laughing at us, Facebook pastors, are now looking at the prosperity of the Facebook pastor. The message is getting out. What you should have done, pastor, is you should have restructured your church while it was closed. My church survived all through the pandemic. We didn't lose anything. I think we, matter of fact, we gained during the pandemic because we had put things in place prior to the shutdown. We had things in place. We but we began to uh, uh, um, boost up and put invest into our, our our online ministries, our social media ministries. We began to boost that up, boost that up prior to the shutdown. So when it happened, we were ready. So bankruptcy. The, if those in the world understand what bankruptcy is, it's not that you lost everything and you're done. It's a restructuring, depending on this is, is it um, if you're filing for the, the 13 or the 7. Which one? So what's happening? You ever went back to your grammar school at your age right now and you notice that the furniture is like a little dollhouse? Hmm. Everything in that, that school is small. The locker is about this small. You got to look down at the locker. Huh? That's the way some of y'all's churches are. After it reopened and during the pandemic, and you went back and said, these people are little country bumpkins. I've been sitting up in here all this time. and I didn't realize 
that I was caught, caught in a trap. I can't walk out. I still don't understand why churches are reopening so fast. What's the rush? The CDC is helping y'all rush back into fools rushing where wise men fear to tread. And so I say to you, my love, my heart is in my head. What's, that's a great song. When we met. Girl, I felt my life begin. Don't open up your church and let them saints rush on in. <laughs> yeah. You shut it down. All right. Some some parents look to the church to raise their children when in fact parents should be trading and teaching. Man, Joan, Joan. Yeah. All right. I want to make sure I didn't miss any questions here. Okay. Uh, so, Corey, did Michelle Carter ask a question? Did I miss something? Oh, why are okay the cat the archbishop archbishops okay <laughs> all right okay I'm scrolling y'all can't see me scroll but I'm scrolling because I can see your comments here uh, some people needed to take the step back clear the blinders and go back to truly see what's going on yeah look at what's happening to the the fast food industry yep no one wants to go back no yeah some churches don't believe the pandemic is real. Is real. Mm hmm. Victoria Quarter. They tested positive at your church. Mm hmm. Yeah. Why not just pay taxes to have religious freedom? <laughs> right, miss. <laughs> oh, man. Trust me. The right political party is going to be in there and they are going to be pulling in, checking the books and looking at that 501c3 just a little harder and say, y'all can't preach about this. You can't preach about this. Nope. And you can't preach about this. And you must marry these people here. Oh, it's coming. No, we can't do that. That's against the word of God. Wait a minute. Yeah, hold on now. Your word of God. Last I checked 10 years ago, you filled out some forms that we gave you because you were interested in a 501c3 that we have. We own is us. You want to be a part of us and you want to save at our store. So we gave you this filing and he, it, it's not in invisible ink. It's right here in your face. It's telling you that if you sign your name here we now own you we own you and now you don't want to do what we say no problem here's what's going to happen you can remove the 501 c3 but all of the taxes that you saved guess what Anybody know? Can you put it in the thingy? Mm -hmm. Put it in the thingy. Sheep are being led back into the slaughterhouse. Vanessa King, how you doing? What do you think about churches that are now COVID-19 vaccination centers? I have no problem with it. I've been vaccinated fully. I thank God for the vaccine. Y'all prayed for it, didn't you? Didn't you? Come on, be honest. Y'all said, God help us with this pandemic. This thing is wiping us out. God send you, send, send a cure quickly. A cure can, even though they've been working on this this whole thing for years. This vaccine has been worked on for years. This technology, the technology, for years. It came and then y'all got scared. It's too fast. <laughs> Boy, you Christians are something else. So absolutely. Make them COVID-19 vaccinations. Uh, uh, you open a church for everything else, don't you? Everything. You made the church a multi-purpose place for everything. So I have no problem with it. Pastor Jamal lifestyle is a splattered all over social media. Before COVID-19, he was a hot. <laughs> <Yo. laughs> Woo! Our black churches depend on familiarity. 
yet it stuns some of our growth. Hey, you're right, Corey. Whoo, man. That's it, y'all. The 501c3, they're going to say, pay up. <laughs> pay up. <laughs> Miss said, I can't go back. I can't. I won't go back. I won't go back. <laughs> the church is a harlot of the state. <laughs> Jimmy got soul. Uh, the 501c3 teaches is mixed in with why you will have to marry gays. Oh, yeah, there it is. There's the show. The 501c3 show is right there. Unfortunately, you got to go. Well, just type that in on my YouTube channel because you won't be able to hit this link uh, if you're not on Facebook. I don't feel sorry for these followers anymore because they refuse to leave the burning house. Ooh, Priscilla, Priscilla, you acting like me, girl. Yeah, there's a there's room in the bunker. There's room. They are vaccination centers because the, the government is paying them. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Hey, y'all, y'all, y'all doing it, man. I ain't never known a house to be untouched when cleaning is taking place. <laughs> Boy, y'all, y'all too much. Y'all too much. Uh-huh. Y'all too much. Dream girls for sure. Jimmy did have some. <laughs> uh <laughs> oh, Mark <laughs> Brianville. The church that they keep inviting. Can y'all tell me why they're inviting Carlton Pearson? There is a reason why they are inviting Carlton Pearson. Now, I did the Carlton Pearson show. All right. I was his driver when he came and ran a revival at my university, Bethune Cookman. I picked him up from the airport. I didn't know he was a preacher when he when he, he had this curly hair, biker jeans and leather jacket and cowboy boots. I said, "You a pastor? <laughs> you a preacher?" And he laughed. <laughs> I'm looking for Carlton Pearson, the minister who's supposed to. I'm he. No, I mean for real. <laughs> we went out to dinner and we all week long we were together and I played the organ for him, what have you. Great, funny man. He is hilarious. Never thought he'd break my heart like that. I see so much working behind the scenes within the media. Play for me. <laughs> Pray for me. Oh y'all. They need that money to pay the mortgage, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh it's not going back. Uh, to the four walls really an option right right <laughs> yeah Bianca he's still around and he has a large following large large they love he you may not love God but you love he <laughs> yeah they love him all right um, so y'all let me know if you got any more questions so I can shut it down. Ann Burke, that's your old classmate? It's really a shame. I enjoyed this man's ministry. I went to his Azusa revivals in Tulsa at the time of my life. A lot of words of wisdom came from him in, in those nights that I was with him. And then he turned. Broke my heart to pieces. Sister Rogers, her last title on her deathbed and not sooner miss yeah um she talking about joyce rogers y'all they made her the supervisor of women um, uh wait of the of, of a jurisdiction or or, or or something um i wish i can answer that I, I think they were trying to be honorable because she was going to get that position and they felt that they needed to do it. And that I, I'm sure there was pressure put on the people to do that for the mother to do that. You know, Kojic is very politically based. <clears throat> Why did Pearson turn? He had a vision. Uh, you have to ask the same question. Why did... Uh, who, who was that who's responsible for the theory of evolution? Why did he turn? I, they both turned for the same reason. They both turned for the same reason. Good night, Pitts. All right. Ch 
Charles Darwin. Yeah, him, Victoria. He doesn't believe there's a hell or a devil. Uh, Charles Darwin turned on God. His parents put him, paid, put him in school to be a minister. He liked to dissect animals. While he's studying to be a minister, a priest or something, he went down into the Galapagos Islands and he discovered all of these birds, these finches and these turtles. And he tried to figure out why is this turtle different than the one on this island, but this one on this island have a different kind of, and why is this finch, this beak is this way in this island, but it's this way in this island. He says it doesn't make sense. And when you ask questions like that, Satan is always present. And I believe on the islands, Satan spoke to that man. And he said, surely nature is doing this. <clears throat> Pearson had a vision and Satan spoke to him. The very Satan in whom he believed doesn't exist. All these white evangelicals were swearing and kissing up to Donald Trump. They said he would be the next president, even though the voting came and gone. The counting and the, uh, the affirming the vote in January the 6th came and gone. They still consider him the president of the United States. Why? For the same reason. A strong delusion. One of our acquaintances, their whole church opened up in April and it became a super spreader. Yeah. 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 Can you take my question on Patriarch? Uh, let's see. John, what you ask it? Yes, miss. They tried to help him. He wasn't hearing that. He's he's gone. He in a sense, he's a he's a reprobate. We don't know. You can't prove a riverbait. He's just acting like one. And I'm praying that as long, long as he's breathing, that God will save him. Uh, he didn't lose his salvation. I don't believe you can lose your salvation. He was an apostate. He never. He was never saved. Y'all like, what? Yeah, I, I did that show too. I get a lot of people disagree with me on stuff I say. <laughs> They're nice to me, but they don't agree. <laughs> Jesus said, well, in First John, as a First John or Second John, they left us. They were not with us. He says. He says they left us because they were never with us. Never. Joan, I'm looking for your questions on the Patriarch. You may have to type it again. Oh, I had a question on Patriarch under fifty years old. Okay, but um, what was your question? Uh, because as it pertains to uh, the Levites, you, at, at 50, you had to retire. So y'all are calling yourselves Levites in this church today and y'all in your 60s. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm way past my Levitical years and I'm supposed to have been retired. And... Uh, and um, then you give counsel to the young Levites, and, but you don't lift nothing heavy. You don't do anything. You retire. That's not, that's the old Testament. All right. Um, but I'm looking, why would anyone under the age of 50 call themselves Patriot? That's a good question. Uh, they need it. I know people who are teenagers were saying, my daughter, the Lord has said this and he's using these terminologies that was learned. It's a culture. And Jesus, you know what he said about man's traditions and experiences. We created this monster of Christian dumb. We created it. A lot of this is our fault. <laughs> we created these monsters. 
Yeah, I know. I know. It is sad towards his death, Charles Darwin went back to God, but the gatekeepers have uh, kept his salvation. He even doubted his atheist beliefs. Yeah. Um, it's a lot to that. I guess I got to do a show. Do you think Seventh Day Adventists are a cult? Yes. Next question. Uh, Pearson did state that Pastor Oral Roberts tried to talk. He did. I heard Pastor Oral Roberts out of his own mouth before he died. He said it himself. He tried and he cried over it. He says, please don't do this. A friend came to him as a homosexual and he could not believe that God would send him to hell. Yes, that's how Barack Obama turned on this whole gay right situation. His daughters said they had gay friends. All right. So how do people change from their that narrow path, that straight and narrow path? How do they change? They look over on the broad way, the winding road. They look over there and they begin to sympathize with people who are hurting and they get they pull over on the narrow path and they go and try and help and then they get bit and then they turn they become zombies <laughs> it's the best analogy I can give and then they become them this is why God says separate yourself don't commune with them don't do it because evil communication somebody finished that the flip side of that is oral copeland Planters told him, we agree with you, but we can't preach it. Yeah. T-Vox, run. <laughs> Should all those pastors at Azusa, God never told anyone, look out. Um, you have to repeat that. Uh, this, once again, has been insightful. I grew up on the apostle Richard D. Henson. Your style of teaching resembles him. Amen. That was my, well, strangely, we called him our uncle. My my grandmother, the prophetess Hattie B. Jones, adopted him as his her son, and so Pastor Hinton was always in our house, <laughs> not our house, in my grandmother's house, and we'd come over and he'd be having dinner with his mom. So Hinton was our uncle. We loved him. Or why is it, and both of us, ironically, both my grandmother joined this church. <laughs> my other grandmother, my mother's mother joined this church. Why is it uh, when children go to college, they come back with their faith challenge? Uh, yeah, that's, that's the evil communication. I almost got jacked up. If I didn't go there with, with my faith strong, I would have gotten caught up in all of this stuff. I was on the in the dormitory where all of the, the band and the choir members were there and, there was, and we were on the floor where a lot of gay men were. And trust me, I heard a lot of sounds coming out of those rooms. And the girls, they would sneak up in our rooms. And a lot of that was tempting. And it was a Christian college. Go figure. Those are the worst. <laughs> all right. Hats off to you for a very... Thank you. Been blessed by them. Thank you so much. Because I'm going to sleep good tonight. It was sad when I saw Evangelist Joyce's obituary. I remember how hard she worked with the young women. Yeah, I know. I'm digging deeper into my Bible. But is learning about Kojic history just as important? Arisha, uh, learning about Bi uh, Kojic history is not going to get you into a better heaven. No. <laughs> but it's good to know the history of it because you'd be surprised what history uh, you will be familiar with when you get into it. Um, if you want to know some good Kojic history, go to my Kojic shows on YouTube where I was kind of rebuking them. What did I call that show? And I went to the whole history of the Church of God in Christ. Uh, if you just type in Church of God in Christ, so all the genres, you'll find those shows and I give you an in-depth history of the church and you'd be like wow I didn't know that happened under Koji yeah a lot of civil rights things in history happened under the under the umbrella of the church of God in Christ uh, 
empathizers, yep, and emotions will send you to hell because the heart is deceitful in all things. Yes, who can know it? Should we separate church from state? Well, whether we do it or not, it's it's going to be, remain separate and it's going to continue to be separate. Do I agree with the concept? Yes, absolutely. I agree with it. Why? Because the initial reason for it is not so much to protect the state. It was to protect the church. The separation of church and state was to protect the church. You want that. You really do. The problem is collateral damage. Because we can't use spiritual religiosity uh, and do political things at the same time. And that's why they, you have a fight with people. Students can't pray or can't do religious, can't even read their Bibles or use it in assemblies or what have you because of separation of church and state. And some teachers get so afraid of it because they overdo it. But you can bring in uh, literature and all kind of things, homosexual literature and all, all this stuff, but you can't bring in religious literature, you know. And the those who are Muslim, they're able uh, to get things done or have their way in, in many cases because they, the Christianity is the number one religion that is the most disrespected. The other ones, they're afraid they won't touch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, he did talk to Carlton Pearson, but he still believes. Yeah. Our pretty lady, you're welcome. Uh, what do you think about Pastor Gen General Gen Jennings? He is a Pharisee. Jennings is a very angry man. He likes to respond to videos like this, too. So he'll be in the pulpit talking about Sir Walter Jones. He's calling himself, sir. Read it, read it again, read it again. There is no, there is no, sir. <laughs> you don't like what I'm saying, come here. Come to the church and we'll talk about it. Say amen. <laughs> yeah, he coming after me. He's a very angry man. I've seen his kind coming up. Um, Pharisees talk like that. Yeah, very angry man. He likes the controversy. Like me. I think we brothers. <laughs> he and I like controversy. <laughs> it, just thought, it just dawned on me. We, he and I should do a show together. Yeah. Uh, QAnon is growing in the churches. What should we be aware of? Harris. Uh yeah, I, I like to do it. Can I do a separate show on that, Harris? I like to do a separate show on that. And I've been meaning to do that. I kind of spread, I sprinkle conspiracies in, in these these groups and all this stuff. I, I've done that, but I'd like to do something special. I have been praying for Bishop Pearson to come back. I cried when I said, yeah, Hargrave, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Millie, Millie. Uh, that's why I tell people that you you can outgrow ministry, but you cannot outgrow God. Ooh, 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 Priscilla, Priscilla. What do you think about the teaching of Craig Lewis? Uh, I don't have a problem with Craig Lewis. Uh, he's not my cup of tea, but you know what he does works for him. You know he became famous with those those videos on hip hop music and what have you. It was good. He had a good run. His following was not as big as it was in his heyday, but he's still there, y'all. He still got a following. But it's not world it's not like it was with those because it was very controversial what he did. Everybody have a heyday and then they kinda then they kinda they don't die. They just ride away ride a wave. <laughs> okay. So I don't really have an opinion on him other than you know, um, I'm, I'm praying for his ministry. I don't beat up all pastors. If I know them and I think that they're sound, I tell you they're sound. But, but Craig Lewis, I don't really listen to him. A lot of stuff that I have, I have heard from him is actually pretty good. He just, not my cup of tea. We all are prejudiced in our own special ways. 
towards we have our favorites <laughs> we are all prejudiced all of us if you say you ain't prejudiced you lie <laughs> uh if you oh, I, i'm from kenya we have a subject called cree in school christian oh wow there go your license room <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 what's up with bishop tj jakes and joe those things take on homosexuality now i don't know what they're saying now about homosexuality but back in the day, they got in some heap of trouble. Bless it to you, Vanessa King. Thank you for the super chat. Heap of trouble. <laughs> Samuel, um, yes, I'm very cogent. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't. Let me, let me correct that. I'm not very cogent. Uh, I'm in the cogent church. I'm in the church of God in Christ. All right. I go to the jurisdictions when, whenever I can. I go to all the district meetings and I go to the holy convocation when I can. I'm still the Church of God in Christ. Um, they gave me my, my my rope and they gave me my class A and my my collar. They gave me all that stuff. I rarely, rarely ever wear that stuff. I just wear the rope uh, because I when I go out and I do certain things, there's a certain um, it gets me into certain places. I can get certain things. I can get to minister to certain people because I have the rope on. Without the rope, they looked at me as, so I use it as a way to get in. Jesus says, become friends with mammon. <laughs> become friends with those who are persuasive, who have power, uh, so that you can get some of the things you, you need for the kingdom, because the wealth of the wicked is what? So use what you got. Put your rope on, get out there, and you can get into places that others can't get into. So I'm Church of God in Christ. I still am, but I don't. I don't teach like a, a Kojic man. And I'm glad I'm separate. So they said, why don't you leave? Well, if I take the light out of the room, the room is dark. <laughs> Joan, I agree. And I will on doctrines. Because somebody asked me about Seven Day Adventists. And I said, they are, and I was done with it, but I'm not done with it because I will do a show on the, the doctrines, uh, denominations in which I believe are occults. I know Craig Lewis doesn't believe in his members wearing masks to church. See, this I didn't know. Quran can only thrive where people don't read, know their Bible. If we are wearing, yeah. Uh, you remember Hattie B. Jones and Pastor Artie was one of my. F oh, wow. I didn't know that. Didn't know that. End times. So keep your faith and trust. Him. Yes, Bishop. Hey, Ernestine Weatherall, my sister. Dr. Charles Stanley. Really? Jimmy, you do got so. <laughs> Charles Stanley. He still comes on uh, Sunday nights, don't he? What was the purpose of a, of a rope? Uh, a robe? You mean robe? All this stuff is Catholic, Chris. It's all this stuff is Catholic. Yeah. No, not Freemason. This is not Freemason. Um, the it actually comes from. It don't even come from the Catholic Church. It comes from the uh, the Episcopal Church. I is it the Episcopal Church? I believe this this year. With uh, the pectoral cross, all right, it's slung around our necks because it serves as a yoke. Uh, we are we are slaves to the Lord, and we tip the pectoral cross in our shirt pockets because that's where our heart is. If you got an elder who got his his over here, he need to take that off. And he didn't he didn't go to the proper training. <laughs> okay. You, when you're not working, you put the cross near your heart. You tuck it in your shirt. All right. And you do weddings and funerals and dedicate buildings and blah, blah, blah. But you usually you take the cross out so that people can see the cross and you work the altar or you do communion, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And when you're done working, you put it in there. But the the, the rope is always seen that shows uh, that you have been through the storm and the rain, <laughs> but you made it. And and you are respected in certain areas. In other areas, you are cursed. They cuss you out. You're a preacher? F you. I get that. <laughs> Trust me. 
I've been cussed out quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you don't need to, you don't need to wear any of this stuff to do street preaching. He reminds me, <laughs> kind of opposite. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right. You thought who retired? Who retired? Uh. Why are, are church folks Freemasons? Um, J. O. Patterson of the Church of God in Christ, the first presiding bishop, was a Freemason. A lot of folks didn't know that until his funeral, and y'all know the Masons came in that funeral and did their thing, and they said, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> "There's a lot of Kojic pastors and bishops that are Masons. A lot more than I can count." I did the Freemason show years ago on my radio show. I'll have to redo it on here. All right. I don't know if I have a Freemason show on my YouTube channel. I don't even know. I don't remember. I don't want to wear those robes for the affirmation service. I think it's all Catholic. Yeah, Joan, I told you. It's Catholic. I can go to Catholic store and get everything Kojic. <laughs> everything Kojic. Yeah. We screwed up in 1968. That's when it happened. We became Catholics in 1968. Yeah. Yes, he was too. I knew that Bishop J.L. Patterson Sr. was a Freemason. Yeah. Yeah, I got to do that show. Yeah. Corey, he was up there. You have to understand, y'all. He was a, he was a funeral director, undertaker, what do y'all call him? You almost have to be a Freemason to be in the funeral business. <laughs> he was very Freemason. <laughs> very Freemason. And uh, so he ain't the only one. His bishop friends were Freemasons too. All right, I better go. Yeah, not G. E. Patterson. Yes, I'm. I, I'm I read your stuff too fast too. <laughs> not G. E. No, he wasn't. He wasn't doing that stuff. A lot of them are secret society. Of, yeah, undercover. Yeah, Oprah got to Jake's and Esteen, and they are now singing a new song. Mm. Clockkeeper, you have been gracious. Thank you. I went to several minutes over. I'm went longer. Now, then I did two o'clock, so that means I did four hours shows today, and I'm done. I'll see y'all tomorrow, midday connection around two o'clock. We'll go back to our relationship shows, all right? Midday connection, and we'll continue this week doing our midday shows. I gotta keep going, keep going. I can't stop, I'm on a roll. And then that following week, I'm in Atlanta. All right. Then after that, I'm back to Miami. Then after that, I'm in Connecticut. And so I'm going to do a lot of traveling this year. I just may be in your town. So uh, if you're ever down in Texas, look me up. Look me up. It's like it was a big secret. <laughs> All right, y'all. My cousin is starting his mortuary service and you just told me he was a Mason. What I tell you? You have to be a Mason <laughs> to be in that thing. I was Catholic before I got saved. Ooh. All right, I love y'all. Thank you. Long day. Gotta go. And uh, my head got cut off. Pray my strength in the Lord. Bye-bye. Hit the share button. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and share and, and subscribe. If you haven't, you may not want to. And I don't blame you. Uh, you can't be the moderator and debate. <laughs> y'all are crazy. <laughs> Good night, Joanne. Cause y'all show me that. I thought I was a cheap crazy man, but y'all more y'all more crazy than me. I feel like I got a peace sign hitting me in the chest. I feel like, oh, bye y'all. Well, good, goodbye. 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 Enjoy yourself. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Fellas.
does. Does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today.